Today, we explore one of the most revolutionary functions in mathematical history, the Weierstrass function. This seemingly simple formula shattered centuries of mathematical intuition and changed how we understand the very nature of continuous curves. The function is defined as f of x equals the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a to the power n times cosine of b to the power n times pi x. Created by Karl Weierstrass in 1872, this function would prove that mathematics still held shocking surprises. Let's build this function step by step to understand its remarkable nature. We'll use the parameters a equals 0 0.5 and b equals 7. These values satisfy the critical condition that a times b equals 3.5, which is greater than 1 plus 3 pi over 2, approximately 5.71. Watch as we construct each term individually. The first term is a to the 0 power times cosine of b to the 0 power times pi x. This simplifies to 1 times cosine of pi x, minus a simple cosine wave. The second term is a to the first power times cosine of b to the first power times pi x, which becomes 0 0.5 times cosine of 7 pi x. Notice how the amplitude is smaller, but the frequency is much higher. The third term is a squared times cosine of b squared times pi x, or 0 0.25 times cosine of 49 pi x. The amplitude continues to decrease, but the frequency grows exponentially. As we add the fourth term, 0 0.125 times cosine of 343 pi x, and the fifth term with frequency 2401, we see an incredible pattern emerging. Each new term oscillates faster and faster, yet with decreasing amplitude. The magic happens when we sum all these terms together. The infinite series converges to create a function that is continuous everywhere, yet has a jagged, fractal-like appearance at every scale. Now let's prove why this chaotic-looking function is actually continuous everywhere. This proof uses one of the most powerful tools in mathematical analysis, the Weierstrass m-test. Step 1. Each individual term is bounded. Since the absolute value of cosine is always less than or equal to 1, we have that the absolute value of a to the n times cosine of b to the n times pi x is less than or equal to a to the n. Step 2. The series of upper bounds converges. Since 0 is less than a, which is less than 1, the geometric series sum of a to the n from n equals 0 to infinity equals 1 over 1 minus a. For our value a equals 0 0.5, this sum equals 2. Step 3. Apply the Weierstrass m-test. Since each term is bounded by a convergent series, our original series converges uniformly. Step 4. Uniform convergence implies continuity. This is a fundamental theorem in real analysis. If a series of continuous functions converges uniformly, then the limit function is also continuous. Therefore, despite its wild oscillatory behavior, the Weierstrass function is continuous at every single point on the real line. Here comes the shocking part proving that this continuous function has no derivative anywhere. This proof is a masterpiece of mathematical ingenuity. We start with the difference quotient, f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. This equals the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a to the n times the quantity cosine of b to the n times pi times the quantity x plus h minus cosine of b to the n times pi x, all divided by h. Using the trigonometric identity for the difference of cosines, this becomes negative 2a to the n times sine of b to the n times pi x plus b to the n times pi h over 2 times sine of b to the n times pi h over 2, all divided by h. Here's the brilliant strategic move. We choose h equals pi over b to the m for some positive integer m. This choice makes the calculation tractable and reveals the function's true nature. For terms where n is greater than or equal to m, the argument b to the n times pi h over 2 becomes b to the power n minus m times pi over 2. When n minus m is even, the sine equals 0. When n minus m is odd, the sine equals plus or minus 1. The key insight is that the sum of the first m terms grows like the sum of a times b to the power n from n equals 0 to m minus 1. Since a times b is greater than 1, this geometric series grows without bound as m approaches infinity. This means that for any point x and any sequence of h values approaching 0, we can always find a subsequence where the difference quotient becomes arbitrarily large. Therefore, the derivative does not exist at any point. Let's visualize what mathematical continuity really means using the rigorous epsilon-delta definition. 
the limit of f of x as x approaches c equals l means that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that if the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Watch as we demonstrate this with a simple example. Consider the function f of x equals x squared over 2 plus 1, and let's examine continuity at x equals 1. First, we choose epsilon equals 0 0.8. The epsilon bands are horizontal lines at l plus epsilon and l minus epsilon. Now we must find a delta such that whenever x is within delta of our point c, the function value stays within the epsilon band. For this quadratic function, we can choose delta equals 0 0.5. Notice how all points within delta of c have function values within epsilon of l. Now we make epsilon smaller, 9 at 0 0.4. We can still find a suitable delta, though it must be smaller. Finally, with epsilon equals 0 0.2, we find an even smaller delta that still works. This demonstrates that no matter how tight we make the epsilon constraint, we can always find a corresponding delta. This is the essence of continuity. The Weierstrass function has a fractal dimension that lies between 1 and 2, measuring exactly how rough the function is. Let's calculate this step by step. The Hausdorff dimension formula is d equals 2 plus the natural logarithm of a divided by the natural logarithm of b. Step 2. Substitute our parameters a equals 0 0.5 and b equals 7. So d equals 2 plus the natural log of 0 0.5 divided by the natural log of 7. Step 3. Calculate the logarithms. The natural log of 0 0.5 equals the natural log of 2 to the negative 1 power, which equals negative natural log of 2, approximately negative 0 0.693. The natural log of 7 is approximately 1.946. Therefore, d equals 2 plus negative 0 0.693 divided by 1.946, which equals 2 minus 0 0.356, giving us approximately 1.644. What does this dimension mean? A smooth curve has dimension 1. A surface that completely fills a plane has dimension 2. Our Weierstrass function, with dimension approximately 1.64, is rougher than any smooth curve, yet doesn't fill the entire plane. It represents something fundamentally between a curve and a surface. The Weierstrass function represents one of mathematics' greatest paradigm shifts. In 1872, when Weierstrass first presented this function, it challenged the fundamental belief that continuous functions must be smooth and differentiable. 